visionaries welcome back to planet venus and if you're not subscribed please do subscribe and i hope you enjoy today's video visionaries welcome back wanted to come back to you with a quick video about sponsored products and opening a store using your merch by amazon items that you have up already i was thinking about how can i optimize my social media outreach and have kind of a cohesive storefront where my customers would want to shop. So let me take you inside Amazon advertising. So for those who are already on AMS doing AMS ads for their merch products, this is not going to look any newer to you. I was, I'm just going to point out a couple of options that you might not have utilized before. Just taking you inside some additional features and for those of you that have not utilized AMS ads in general, the store feature, all of this is essentially pretty easy to set up and the store feature is completely free. There's no fee to set up the store. Obviously the ads you pay per click and that sort of thing. But if you don't want to run an ad campaign, you don't have to. You uh, would essentially just be setting up your store via the template and launching it. And it does go through an approval process. So you have to have approved products on there. Essentially products that aren't, uh, don't have any profanity on them and things of that nature. But um, as I take you in, I will show you that. But I think that it provides the best option for us to be able to advertise market our products in a cohesive way and not be bound to having just one brand featured like that's what I was doing before using links and things to one of my brands to promote like 10 to 15 products that was under that one brand but then if I had some other products under other brands like how are you supposed to do that are you trying to switch out your Instagram link every two seconds to cover as many products as you can or do it this way which is to set up a store and you can put put in any ASIN you want to pull up and it will be kind of an aggregate and then you could do multiple pages based on different brands and stuff so I have a general page as my home page and then I kind of get into niches in the additional pages that's in the store so it's just how you want to set it up so let me take you inside so we can get started okay so now we're in the user interface you can see my campaigns and this is kind of what my overall sales are looking like for my AMS ads. I haven't done a lot of updating of my AMS ads so far because the shirts that I focused on for those ads are selling well already. But you can see I've spent about $80 and the return on that is about $500 with the ACOS of about 16%. So that's good. Anything under 20% ACOS is what you want to shoot for. And you can see the number of impressions and then the number of clicks. And um, even though it's a low number of clicks amongst the impressions, you can see for the clicks that do occur, um, they're likely to result in a sale. And that's evidenced by the lower ACOS. So um, they click in and um, the conversion to a sale that's what you are ultimately shooting for the price of what that click costs versus what you make in sales so the spam versus the sales that's what calculates the ACO so generally when you log in to the Amazon advertising dashboard that's where you'll be taken um, I started out doing individual products then I went to sponsor brands and I have one sponsor brand that I still uh, promote to this day it was challenging because for the sponsor brand you, you have multiple products under that brand and so you're trying to give as much visibility to each one of the shirts as you can and so I had to have a wider range of keywords but again I do everything manual and then monitor which keywords are performing and which ones are costing me the most that's not giving me the highest return and switching those out as the campaign continues to make sure that you're maximizing reach and sales potential but not totally breaking the bank with your spend. So, um, so yeah, sponsor brands is a good way 
to kind of aggregate some of your shirts under that brand and then just promote that brand. And, and those are kind of like the banners as that you see across the top, like highlighting three or four of the products under that brand. So if someone searches for that search term and obviously the sponsored brands, Sometimes, depending on what niche you're in, garner more cost per click than uh, in, an individual product. So it's just up to what niche you're in, how popular it is, and then the bidding that's going to go on based on what placement you want for your ads. And obviously, everybody is looking at for a top of page placement. So that's going to cost you more than, you know, if it was the bottom of the page or sometimes I see them in the middle of the page. It just depends on what layout during the search the um, ad, the sponsored brand will come up in. So that's another option to aggregate your products into one brand so that you can use one link on Instagram or Facebook or wherever you're promoting your stuff. So, but I also want to draw your attention up here. So we have stores and stores. You can set up a store. So you're taken to the store builder and you want to select a brand display name. So obviously my name, my store name has nothing to do with my social media name. So it's not absolute Venus or anything like that. So you want to make it kind of ambiguous based on how you're known online. And if you're talking online under your Twitter account or Instagram account and talking about you're a merch seller. That's not the name you want to use for your store unless you want people to know what stuff you design and go over there and take a look at your stuff. So I use a totally different identity and name for that. So whatever you want to name it that makes sense. Maybe you name it in one of your existing brands that you use for Amazon. You can name it the same thing. And then you upload an image, an overall logo for it. And that's what's going to show kind of as the heroes. They get the link from your social media and go in. That's kind of going to be your overall banner for the store. So then once you set that up, you'll then be taken to a screen where you can add multiple products. And I'm going to show you an existing store so you can see the sections that are possible there. Here's a store on Amazon called The Little Flower Soap Company. And so it's featured under the handmade section of Amazon. Similarly to how there are sections here, you would be able to set up sections on your own store. So when you set up your store, you have kind of the overall homepage and it's very Various, various different layouts you could put like your banner and multiple products under there or how they have it set up like three products that kind of give you the overall idea of their store um, of soap making and other handmade crafts and gifts that they have so it'll just be up to you on the main page and then um, they have reviews and things so it's probably ways to bring that in too because the shirts that I have reviews on when I have them down here where I have a featured product section. It brings in the reviews that they have. So it's just up to the way that you want to set it up. But usually you'll be able to feature some products on the homepage and a couple of other things that you want to do. This one is more extensive because it has like lifestyle shots of the owner and different things that you be able to do kind of, but you would be able to do a mixture of things based on how you want to lay out the store. And then on the back end, it also gives you the option to then add in other sections to other things. But you would have, like if you had an overall general page and then you had a niche, let's say you had cat shirts, you would be able to put a section under that or whatever. And then this one specific URL will be the URL that you use to bring everybody here on your Instagram, on your Twitter, Facebook, wherever you're promoting your shirts. And they would click in here and then be able to go into other sections in your store. So that's how I have mine set up. I, again, started with sponsored brands and that was still kind of limiting to me because when you do sponsored brands, you're kind of already going into a niche, but I wanted to bring them to a general place and then have them be able to 
pick from a couple different niches by me being able to separate them out into different pages. For those that are not familiar, let me quickly show you what a sponsor brand looks like. So this would be a sponsor brand here. This cat mo cattle moda. So you put in cat shirts and here it comes the sponsor brand. And as you can see here, it sponsors three products. So they sh they're showing cats wearing these different like cool vests or sweaters or pullovers or whatever. But then when you go into shop now, then you'll see the store. So the banner, that's what we were in the logo. That's what we were setting up here. And then this is how you do. This is the way you do a sponsored brand. So the sponsor brand allows you to have however many products you want under the brand as you want. So that's what they did was a sponsored brand here. So again, it's going to give you this banner, highlight three of your products, and then when they go in and want to see more and shop now, then you go in and you'll be able to see a whole line of products and that's what you do under a sponsor brand. So you guys let me know if you have already set up a store um, or sponsor brands, how that's working for you guys and how if you use social media, how you're utilizing that, whether it's Pinterest posts or making posts on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, how you're doing that. So basically, um, I started maybe four or five months ago and added new social media accounts because you guys already know that I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff under Absolute Venus. So I wanted my shirts to be under uh, a more anonymous name. So my brands, I started other social media accounts and I use the, the links to my store to those accounts um, so that customers that's actually interested versus, you know, people that just want to look at my designs and uh, maybe <laughs> make similar designs of their own um, wouldn't be, you know, connecting me with those accounts. So that's how I'm doing it. I do Pinterest posts. I do Instagram posts and they're more kind of, you know, business related posts. So I have a lifestyle image and put something compelling in the description so they can like and share and tag people in those and utilize this overall link. There's one link to my store with the various sections to attract people to one place. And I think that overall is definitely working because some of the shirts that I've sold before but don't sell with regularity, I'm seeing them come in as a sale along with others. So I'm seeing a lot, of, lot more multiples now under one specific brand than I have before. It's usually one-offs, but now I'm seeing two of this shirt and one of this shirt in one sale and that sort of thing or coming in in close proximity like they're a part of one sale um so that's definitely helping with selling the multiples and just building your overall brand it's definitely an easy way to aggregate your products into one specific brand and to be able to point your customers to one storefront instead of one product at a time and that's like a nightmare on Instagram unless you're going to have like a link tree link that links to a bunch of different things where they can look at the menu and you know click through on a bunch of different things this is the easiest way I found to aggregate your listings and have them land in one place similar to like an Etsy store or something like that and be able to promote your merch products as a cohesive store so you guys let me know if you've done this if it's worked for you if you have another method that you want to share with the group that's always helpful as well and I thank you for tuning in and some my videos have been somewhat irregular but I'm definitely gonna post at least one video a week I'm going to um, come back to you guys with another kind of case study sort of um, to tell you guys how 
I made a thousand dollars in a week from merch without selling a shirt is utilizing skills that we have already guys so you want to stay tuned for that one that'll probably be be next Tuesday I'm going to post it shortly after this one so it'll definitely be up for the premiere probably next Tuesday but it, um yeah we want to diversify and the skills that we have from the research that we're doing from our design knowledge and know-how from our knowledge of e-commerce that we're gaining from having our own store from diversifying to other PODs and things of that nature that's knowledge that you're gaining and you can help others with and not just individuals like us but companies are looking for people to help them do that so think of this as your overall business plan in general are you looking to continue to sell one-off shirts b2c business to customer or can b2b be your focus is that something that you're interested in as well whether it's in local merch or consulting or whatever makes sense so i'm going to share my story about how i made twelve hundred dollars in a week utilizing my e-commerce skills that I've gained through my Merch by Amazon and POD journey in general. So until next time, watch another video. If you haven't seen all my videos, take a look through the playlist and I'll be back to you soon. Until next time, be well and peace family.